Now I want to talk about machine translation, but we should know that nowadays uh, we use more complex algorithms uh, that we take advantage of parsing paradigm. Uh, so whatever we have done in computational linguistics, such as, for example, syntactic parsing, we can use syntactic parsing to improve our current machine translation algorithm. But this lecture is very elementary because it goes back to 2015 when Bogdano and uh, Yoshio Bengio and his friends, they introduced uh, this uh, algorithm. And, uh, and also this, this article is also important because it is another way to implement attention, another formula, let's say. So the contribution of the paper is that the, 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 in this paper, we conjecture that the use of fixed length vector is a bottleneck in improving the performance of basic encoder decoder architecture. And so we, ex we propose to extend this by allowing a model to automatically, I mean, soft search for parts of a source sentence that are relevant to predicting your target word. For example, we have an utterance in input and we have some output a translation. Then we see, we try to align some this word, uh, for example, one word in the output in German that could be related to two words or one word in, uh, in English. So we are try to align them. So, and you, we, this is called attention because we are attending, we should know that using the concept of context, for example, what is context? Context is just a weighted combination of those uh, hidden representation of encoder. And that's why, uh, uh, and that's why a linear combination of your representation is a good measure, is a good uh, variable, call it context, and later we'll see what is attention. And so because the, the old ideas of these language translation methods, machine translation methods, were, were based on this. Were based on this encoder decoder, but the but we had a, we had a fixed length vector that represent all of these information. It was really challenging at those times that we could represent with just one fixed vector. But now we understood that we can define this concept and we align them. So linguistically plausible soft alignment between a source sentence and the corresponding target sentence. This is alignment between source sentence and target sentence. We should align as much as possible. So the decoder is very easy. We just define this context vector, as I said, CI, which is a linear combination of your H, H. In, in, the, in this paper, H is called annotation. They call it annotation for some reasons. But H is, is the uh, representation of vector representation of those hidden states. And alpha are just the weights that can be computed here uh, by this uh, softmax of this uh, energy. But e EIJ is, all, is sometimes called score, sometimes called energy, sometimes called alignment modules. So all of them are equal. What is important is that you can define your this energy different ways. For example, one way is just to combine the information from hidden states of encoder and hidden states of the decoder in the previous step. And if you combine, if you add them up and then give it to 10 edge activation and then do a just simple dot product with the VA transpose, uh, then we get, so what we should learn is this, this variable, this variable, this variable. Machine should learn these three variables in order to have a good machine translation.
or any other sequence to sequence models nowadays which which is emphasized and which is concentrated on just supervision very full uh, su supervision and there are also other versions of that they use semi supervised uh, learning as well but what is important is as i said uh, this um, alpha that is just a, it just says what combination of your hidden states, for example, uh, 20%, 30%, 50%, which combination should be uh, represented, which combination uh, of your hidden states can lead to a good context that can be used for a decoder. So S is always in this article, and many of the articles are refers to just the hidden states of the decoder. And in, in implementing it, it they use also other things like, for example, in in they use gated units instead of by LSTM and LSTM and those things. They just use GRU. And for the decoder, uh, they use, so we have initial states S0 is computed by this one, and the context uh, is, is always like this. The context is important, it is a linear combination of your hidden states of the encoder. And of course, the, in their, in the, implementation they used this idea of max uh, for because we can implement the last layer in different way but if you max out if you use the idea of max out uh, they they use a single max if you just read this beautiful article this one and this one you will see that uh, this max out is a really interesting a kind of activation. So this article, if you read this article, you understand that how to, uh, how, what, what do we mean by max out? And but what is important is that the probability of your target, why I is a target, for example, a war in German is, is becoming, is, is, is getting generated, is just related to uh, like before. Like before, we said that our, our target war token is related to our decoder states and previous uh, generated outputs, I minus one. But we just now add a context. So it's like before, but we just add a context, CI. So it, it has become more expressive. So instead of just these things, we just add another variable context in order to make it more expressive. And we implement it like this. Because T here refers to, r refers to uh, a linear combination of S hidden states of decoder, YI minus one is the uh, output generated predicted output which is now, because we are translating from English to German now, so it's German words. And CI is the context. The context that I always say is linear combination of, linear combination of hidden states of encoder. So that's it. This is just an overview of the Bahdanu model because we can also implement it using the other article that I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, which is Luang's model. So the, in the Luang's model, we just do do like this. So it's an, a, a fine function. And, but in the Baton approach, we use this. There are, of course, other approaches. You can concatenate them and you can invent new ways for scoring because, after all, there are two variables and they just need to know how to arrange them to, need to, to create a, a value from that. 
So this is the beautiful picture. Bahadan architecture is here. And the Luang architecture is here. So you can judge which one is more beautiful. But what we should what should we understand from these things? If we see that performance drops for long sentences, it cannot uh, capture all of these things because you have lots of hidden layers and it becomes very complicated. But we see that performance, uh, but still RNN, the, the RNN search method that is proposed in this, in this paper is much better than conventional methods. Because in RNN search, 50 is here, is going up. So the performance is not reduced. As, as the sentence length grows, it's still as good as, uh, uh, is still good because the, the performance is not dropped. And so this is the implementation of the encoder. We have bridge encoder hidden to decoder hidden. And so we have used GRU here. Uh, we always, uh, uh, just like Fourier transform, we, you do Fourier transform and then you should do inverse Fourier transform. With this analogy, with this metaphor, you can use this as well. You pack something after giving it to your model GRU, then you unpack it. And this is this, this way you can unpack it. You pad pack sequences. So uh, you unpack it and after that it's now ready to uh, to use a lit transform is a is is here. It's just a bridge between encoder to decoder. So because the first uh, uh, hidden layer of the because all of them are hidden layer related to each other of the decoder, but the first this one the first hidden layer the first hidden representation of the decoder is not on uh, is still not. Uh, um, covered. So that's why we model it with this. We are transforming going to the dimension of the decoder from the dimension of encoder. So from hidden representation of this, we do some linear combination in order to go to this to represent this as well. Because other hidden representation, we know how to model them. It is connected and everything is obvious. So the bridge encoder, as I said, that the first hidden state of the decoder should be constructed based only on encoder hidden states. So that's why we use linear combination. And we have, uh, so this could be two different dimensions. It doesn't need to be equal. And what is mask fill in PyTorch that we always use it? You see, we have sometimes uh, this this means that whenever there is a score is equal to zero, put it minus infinity. Whenever the scores of this tensor is equal to zero, put it instead of that, is put it minus infinity, and that's why we pr we can produce such a matrix, such a tensor. Another reason to use mask fill is that uh, we need to make sure that they are attended, attended properly. And so this is back down attention implementation. So this is, this is one way. This is another implementation of that, which is much easier for you to follow because now we have embedding layer, you get you drop out is, is just optional. Then you general attention, and then you give it to general. Uh, so these are the layers that you need, but it, the forward layer is important because the order of these things are important. So first you do embedding, and you view it in a form that is appropriate because you have batches, you have, you have different things. And then you calculate the attention weights and apply them, those formula that I said. And BMM is batch matrix multiplication 
that I've explained several times. So you use lock softmax. Instead of softmax, use lock softmax, a little bit more stable sometimes. And this is an implementation of attention battle. So in the in the forward, you have energy. That's alignment model. Some people call score, some people call energy, some people call alignment model. But after that, you have a weighted combination of them that is context. And so you have this context, and then you give context to the decoder here. For example, here we just concatenate the embedded and the context and decoder output to, and then we give it to a transform, to, to a linear. It's, it's, transform is just a linear model, nothing to do with that transformer architecture. And then we have predictions. And finally, when you want to do uh, when you, uh, this is the forward of our model because it connects everything, all mod, all uh, sub modules to each other. And for range, because, because their target sentence, which is in German, we are translating from English to German, your target sequence length, it depends on that. For each of them, it goes, so it's like this, the decoder is like this. This is the input of decoder, input of decoder, and then this is what we have predicted. So the we, it predicted and then can be used for the next layers, for the next hidden uh, units. And then uh, we use uh, teacher forcing. Uh, by default, I use 0.5, uh, is here. By default, I use that because it increases the speed of convergence. It's very essential. So we say that if the random, uh, if random that random is less than that, then you can use a target variable. You can say that you can just give the target. It's cheating, but you can use it. But if it is not, if it is normal standard way that we always knew, we just take the argmax. A simple greedy approach to take the argmax of your output and, and give it to the inputs. And because now we have inputs, it's recursive. It goes back to the these inputs. And this uh, is uh, going in a loop until your target sequence said, this is end of sequence. Do not continue. It's, it's, it is done. So the inference in prediction, we should try to code for that as well, because in inference, we assume that we have, the model has learned the weights, so we should predict it. So you can use a simple greedy approach to just take the maximum, a simple top one, and then, uh, and then that's it. You have implemented the machine translation.